First of all, I fully anticipated having the projects graded by now, but my dad had what looks like a little stroke early Saturday morning, so I really have not gotten a whole lot done this weekend, and that was kind of part of when those were supposed to get done. Basically, it was if I could do more or less half leading up to the weekend and then half over the weekend, then that would have covered it, and then they would have been graded before anybody took the second test, and that was kind of what I wanted. But this was something where I wasn't really going to be able to get everything done the way that I wanted it to. So I guess I'll eventually get everything done, but I'm not going to try to put any kind of timing on that now. It's like wherever I can grade stuff, I'll grade stuff, and ideally that will be sooner rather than later, but I guess we'll see. So that's the first thing. So sorry I don't have those done already, but um, that wasn't really going to be a thing that I could do with the way that things worked out. Okay, the next thing is as far as the correlation and regression stuff goes, so everything that's in Chapter 2, really, because the Chapter 9 stuff, you have the output there. You don't really need to use software, and particularly Stack Key for that, but in Chapter 2 you do. So for anything in Chapter 2 where there's computation, meaning if you have to get a correlation or if you have to get the slope and intercept of a regression line, it's all this option right here where it says two quantitative variables. That's what you want. And I know I made a video about that, and that kind of goes through an example of it, but I figured that was worth pointing out. And if you go to that option, the two quantitative variables, then... If you need to put your own data in there, you just go to edit data, and then you would clear out whatever is in here, this preloaded data set, and put your own sample data in there. And then you'll get everything that you need in a summary table. So I'll just X this out, and we'll just kind of use what's there in that preloaded data set. So you get a scatter plot over here, first of all, which is nice, but the stuff that you probably want is right here. You probably want the correlation, slope, and intercept, or some combination of those things, maybe just the correlation, or maybe just the slope and intercept. But that's where you get them. And that's going to be the easiest thing to use. And I guess one other thing that I wanted to point out, when you go to edit data and type your own data in there, this font size is probably going to be a little bit too small to read, but the general idea is you go X variable first, then Y variable. So... What you end up doing in each row is you write out each point in the scatter plot kind of like a set of ordered pairs, just without the parentheses. So X comma Y, and it always works out like that. And that's going to be the easiest way to handle the computations that are there in Chapter 2. I suppose you could use your calculator to do it if your calculator has those capabilities and you know how to do it already. Um, if not, which I'm assuming is going to be the case for most people, then using stack key to do it is going to be pretty straightforward, I think. As long as you just remember that, that it's X comma Y, um, that it's always going to be that order when you're inputting the data. The other thing that I wanted to point out is how to do the browser check for Wiley Plus, which would be a good idea if you're using ProctorU as your proctor, or if you're taking the exam at another proctoring center, or if you're taking it with me and either you're using one of the school's computers or you're using a different computer than what you used to do the homework with. Different computer and different browser. You want to run this before you even open Wiley Plus, so certainly before you log on or anything. But if you just Google Wiley Plus browser check, this is what you get. Let's see, this second link here, this one is basically what you want, except that it's missing part of the URL, which is weird. It'll work if you retype in a www in front of the Wiley Plus. But this first one and this third one, and I guess this fourth one too, if you look at those, they're all clearly Wiley related links. And if you go to one of those, this should work. Although, I just checked this a minute ago, and it was taking forever to load. So if you go to this, then the system requirements link this should do it. This may or may not actually come up. I guess I'll just talk through and if it comes up, great. And if not, I can kind of just explain what's supposed to be there. If you go here and it actually comes up, then what you get is you get four things, 
where one of them is Flash, one of them is a Java, one of them is a pop-up blocker. So you need to have Flash and Java updated. It'll tell you that you need to have the pop-up blocker turned off. That's not really true. It'll be an extra step if you don't turn it off, but I never turn it off. I guess you could if, if it feels a little bit safer, but you don't really have to. I've never done it. So the ones you need are basically the other three. The pop-up blocker kind of doesn't matter, um, but the other three do. So you do need to have Flash, you need to have Java, and whatever the third one is that I can't remember off the top of my head, because if you don't have those updated, either the parts that involve Flash won't show up, so that would be things like when you have to put together null and alternative hypotheses where you have the box and you have to pick out the symbols that you need to put in into the null and alternative hypotheses. That's what you need Flash for, really. Um, then the other possible thing that can go wrong is if your test freezes, just like entirely freezes up. Usually that's an applet problem. So that's why you want to have those updated. And so I would say run that beforehand. Um, if, I guess really in just about every circumstance, I would say run that beforehand, unless you're going to use the same computer that you've been doing the homework with and you're going to use the same browser. Especially, I mean, it tends to work better with Firefox and Chrome more than anything else. Occasionally, uh, Wiley Plus is a little bit finicky with things like Safari for whatever reason. So I think better safe than sorry and Looks like we didn't get anything, unfortunately. That's what's been happening. I've been trying to get this to work for 10 minutes and it hasn't been working. And it's a quarter of three in the morning. So I don't know that I'm willing to sit up and wait for it to actually do what it's supposed to. That would have been really nice if I could have gotten the thing in the video that's supposed to go in the video. But that doesn't really look like it's working out right now. So I just wanted to throw that as a disclaimer. Not that it's the end of the world necessarily if you have to use the second attempt. Um, but it's kind of annoying. It would be better if everything just worked the way it was supposed to the first time. So that does help uh, running the browser check before you take the exam. So I think generally it's a pretty good idea to do that.